coming up on the Q30 Newscast. The university began their celebrations for Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month early. We'll bring you to the events they've held so far. Students and staff from Boston are remembering a difficult time for the city after the bombing at the Boston Marathon one decade ago. How they view the tragic attack 10 years later. And get ready to eat. Restaurants across New Haven are dishing out their most popular options as part of New Haven Restaurant Week. See how one restaurant is embracing the opportunity. All that and more on this edition of the Q30 Newscast. Hello everybody, my name is Ethan Logue, that's Ben Kane, and welcome to the Q30 Newscast. If there is one word to describe tonight's show, Ethan, it's backed. Yeah, you are absolutely correct with that statement, Ben, and we start tonight's show with the university celebrating Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, with an event highlighted the artwork of one woman in particular. Q30's Joe Monty has the story. Quinnipiac is spreading awareness for Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month by inviting people like Olivia Firebomb Wen a self-taught Vietnamese-American artist to speak on campus. I feel like, you know, um, a lot of our families come to America and they are traditionalized in their own setting. I have to represent where I come from, but in a different way. She went from working in a nail salon to following her dreams and becoming an internationally recognized artist who paints for celebrities and advocates for mental health. Following her success, Wen hopes to impact people with her story and her art. She also hopes to help young women who went through similar experiences to hers growing up. I hope, like today, after speaking today, it helps somebody out. And I hope that once they leave, they help another person out. That's my impact, that's my mission, that's my purpose. Students who attend the event have the opportunity to win a print of one of Olivia's paintings like this one right here behind me. Longtime fan and fellow immigrant artist says she is regularly inspired by Wen and her work. She's an amazing person. She's just like, she's like a ball of light that you can literally walk with you. Like if you message Liv on Instagram, she'll message you back. It might not be same day, but she'll message you back like, hey, so that's this, the answer to this, this, and this. And like, if you have any questions about anything. Students also related to Wen's journey in figuring out her mental health. Topics of mental health, there's a lot of stigma surrounding it. And it's something that, I think I didn't know how to navigate. She kind of expressed similar experiences and like just being open to the concept of asking for help when you need it. To celebrate Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, Quinnipiac also held an event teaching the Asian history behind origami and calligraphy. Reporting for Q30 News, I'm Joe Monty. On Tuesday, the university celebrated Holocaust and Heroism Remembrance Day. This day is a part of a week-long national memorial for the 6 million Jews killed during the Holocaust. At the celebration, students spoke with Rabbi Philip Lazowski. Lazowski says he was just nine years old when the Nazis invaded his country, and he is grateful to be able to speak about it now. And, uh, to, and if you love each other, that's the question that, that someone asked. So, all in all, uh, the world must go on in an understanding one another, and then we'll have a peaceful world. Now moving on to another guest on campus, the Connecticut Inspector General spoke at an event that investigated instances of police misconduct on Tuesday. Devlin was a former prosecutor and Connecticut Superior Court judge. Now Devlin investigates police officer incidents. At the event, Devlin showed examples of real-life situations police officers found themselves in. He then told the audience whether or not the officers acted correctly or incorrectly in these situations. Audience members also gave their thoughts on how they believe the officers should react. A new organization on campus is assisting in being a safe space for victims of sexual assault. Q30 Samantha Pirelli has the story. The Survivor Advocacy Alliance is a new student-run organization at Quinnipiac. The vice president of the club, Sophia Ferrara, said the organization formed because they wanted to create a safe space for any students who may be struggling. One of the problems with sexual assault is that so many like cases of it go unreported because people just don't feel comfortable um, or they don't think that people will believe them or anything like that. You always have your little groups on campus that you know who you can turn to for certain things so having that specific safe space um, was just something that was important to us. 
Since April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, Chief of Public Safety Tony Reyes mentioned Quinnipiac will not tolerate criminal acts, especially sexual assault. Awareness is the key, providing support for our students and just to creating an environment where there's no tolerance. I think that um, that's the recipe for success, right? Our goal is to keep our students safe and to minimize these incidents from happening. The Survivor Advocacy Alliance is working towards spreading awareness to students on campus and want to be a supportive group for victims, not just in April, but for all year round. A sense of safety knowing that if anything were to happen to them or they know anyone that you know, need support, that they have a group of students that they can turn to, um, a meeting that they can go to so that they can feel a little bit safer and know that, you know, if they need anything, there are people there who want to support them and who are actively trying to work towards that awareness. For Q30 News, I'm Samantha Pirelli. Graduation is right around the corner. On Tuesday, the university held a commencement fair for all of its graduating seniors. The class of 2023 picked up their cap and gowns and were also given the opportunity to win prizes and connect with alumni organizations at the fair. And just a reminder for all those wondering and watching, this year's graduation will be on the weekend of May the 12th through the 14th. Love the show Shark Tank? Well, the university just wrapped up their own rendition of the famous TV show in the Piazza. Entrepreneurs had an opportunity to present their business ideas to a panel of judges for the chance to win up to $3,000 each. The business ideas range from health and beauty to services and sports and even social service ventures. And as a part of the university's new status as a B campus, professors and students have been getting their hands dirty in the new pollinator gardens on campus. Students visited the Albert Schweitzer Institute lawn this past weekend to participate in the big event. And biology professor Sarah Lawson took her class earlier today to conduct field research and observe native plants and pollinators. So the Xerces B campus designation means that we're going to use more integrative pest management um, instead of just spraying things all the time. We're going to start to minimize our fertilizers and pesticides and then start planting more native um, plants and more pollinator friendly habitats. So that just kind of started at the pollinator garden, um, but we're hoping it's going to spread across campus. The student programming board kicked off their annual spring week by hosting a Mario Kart tournament titled Cruising Through Moo Moo Meadows. Participants were able to escape for a little bit and enjoy a night full of Mario Kart, and it all came with a bonus. After many rounds of the classic game, the winner took home a copy of Mario Kart 8 for the Nintendo Switch. Quite a nice prize to cap off a fun night. Plus, as a part of SPV Spring Week, many students spent Tuesday night making ice cream sundaes. You scream, I scream, we all scream for ice cream, said the SPV flyer. Students enjoyed some ice cold dessert, bar style trivia, and some extra sweet prizes in the lower calf. And continuing with SPB Spring Week, they held Bobcat Bounce theme event today on the quad. And it was the perfect day for this event as the weather was beautiful and the Quinnipiac students could easily stop by and enjoy the fun. There were plenty of sweets to go around, including a snow cone and cotton candy machine. And to top it all off, they even had several inflatables for students to enjoy. Now we have to step away for a moment, but when we come back, we'll fill you in on the events of the university is putting on for Earth Week. And we'll fill you in in the latest on political news around the country with Mason Glaude. But Ethan, I'm, I'm really starting to miss that warm weather from last week. I just wish there was some type of weather wizard to tell us this week's forecast. Well, Ben, hopefully Isabella Foley can cast a few spells for us this week. Isabella, what's it looking like in the coming days? Thanks, Ben and Ethan. So jumping right into our three-day forecast, obviously today we had some partly cloudy weather with a high of 58 and a low of 38. Thursday and Friday we're getting some more sunny weather with a high of 67 and low of 37 on Thursday and a high of 72 and low of 45 on Friday. So maybe you can start getting those shorts out. I'll be right back with the rest of the weather forecast after this commercial break. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the sock. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tape. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, 
Come on, man, let's put a ride home. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Jewel, spot on this last one. Uh, there it is. He's gone with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Welcome back. I've got some fantastic news. Earth Day is right around the corner and the university is joining in on the celebrations. The Students for Environmental Action will be hosting a celebration for Earth Day on the quad this Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. For more information on the event, you can email Olivia Fontaine at ofontaine at quinnipiac.edu. A Polish violin duo is making their way to Quinnipiac tomorrow night. The duo has won almost 200 awards from competitions across Asia and Europe. And to make it even better, they will be performing for free for students. The performance will be in Buckman Theater at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. Students interested will need a ticket to get in. The duo has also released two albums recently, so make sure you give them a listen before tomorrow night's show. The Student Government Association is hosting their spring election e-board debates this week. Quinnipiac students are encouraged to attend so they can listen to the candidates who are running and hear their ideas for next year. The debates begin Friday at 5.30 p.m., and you can watch it right here on q30tv.com watch. The debates are expected to conclude around 9. Now jumping from campus-wide campus politics excuse me, to the national stage, Mason Glott is here for your Q30 political update. Mason, I know Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is making headlines this week. What's the latest surrounding the governor? Guys, that's right, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis continues to make aggressive comments against the Walt Disney Company amidst their long-standing feud. On Monday, DeSantis suggested building other theme parks or even a new state prison on state-owned land surrounding Walt Disney World. The comments come after news that Disney struck an agreement with a local board to maintain special control over the land their theme park is built on in Florida. Commenting on this deal, DeSantis said, quote, they negotiated with themselves to give themselves the ability to maintain their self-governing status. That's not going to fly, end quote. Many prominent Republicans have spoken out against DeSantis, including former President Donald Trump, who said, quote, DeSantis is being absolutely destroyed by, his, by Disney. His original PR plan fizzled, so now he's going back with a new one in order to save face, end quote. Another Republican speaking out against DeSantis is Chris Christie. The former New Jersey governor who recently announced he is weighing a 2024 presidential campaign. On Tuesday, Christie spoke at an event saying that a presidential run would be a, quote, huge risk. But sources close to Christie claim he has spoken to potential donors and staffers about the possibility. Christie reportedly views himself as one of the only legitimate candidates who could take on former President Donald Trump and appeal to independent voters. Christie spoke on Trump saying, quote, no one in this country asked him to be their retribution. I think a president should be our inspiration, not our retrib retribution." End quote. Christie has indicated he will announce his decision in the next few weeks. Moving on to the Senate, key Democrats are eyeing a Supreme Court ethics hearing involving Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. This comes after news that Thomas has been receiving previously undisclosed gifts and travel from Republican billionaire Harlan Crow. Democratic Senator and Majority Whip Dick Durbin spoke on the issue saying, quote, 20 years of gift travel on yachts and chartered planes was outrageous, end quote. It is currently unclear when the hearing would take place or what it would look like, but analysts are doubtful that Thomas would testify. Many Republicans have dismissed the situation, with Senate Mi Minority Leader Mitch McConnell suggesting the court can handle the situation themselves. That's all I have for politics this week. Back to you, Ben and Ethan. Thanks for the update, Mason. Now it's time for us to step out again. But coming up, we'll have your full weather forecast and a look at what's making national headlines. Don't close that browser. See you in 90 seconds.
Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm gonna call my dad. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. The Q30 newscast is officially back from break. Now, Ethan, that three-day weather forecast was a little disappointing. Do you think the weather's going to get a little warmer? Ben, unfortunately, I don't have the answer to your question, but I know someone who does. Lucky enough, Isabella Foley is here in studio to give us the full outlook as, as well as temperatures around the state. Isabella? Well, I do indeed have all the answers you guys are looking for. So as I was saying on Wednesday today, the high was 58, a low of 38. Thursday and Friday are getting a little sunny, but it's not looking promising for the rest of the week. Thursday, high of 67, low of 37. Friday, high of 72 and a low of 45. Moving over to the weekend, Saturday, we have a high of 68 and a low of 50. Sunday, we have a high of 60 and a low of 49. Monday, we have a high of 59 and a low of 46. And finally, on Tuesday, those storms are coming. Those April showers are still staying strong. A high of 57 and a low of 43. Unfortunately, you're still going to have to keep your coats ready. Now, moving on to Connecticut weather. In Hartford, the current temperature is 45 degrees, Norwich 44 degrees, and New London 47 degrees. Moving over to the other side of Connecticut, the current temperature in Torrington is 40 degrees, Danbury 45, and New Haven 47. That's all I have for this week's weather. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Thank you, Bella. We're actually going to stick on the show as last Friday marked 10 years since two brothers sent the city of Boston into a panic after they set off two bombs at the Boston Marathon finish line. Q30's Katie Cohen spoke to students and faculty on campus who remember that time and reflect on how it changed the city of Boston and the people right here in Hamden. Ten years later, people across the country remember a day of terror, fear, and loss after two bombs went off at the finish line of the Boston Marathon in 2013. With three people dead and hundreds injured and in shock, the people of Boston worked to repair the widespread damage. To have that shattered, to have that event forever changed by this, by this tragedy, is something that was immediately felt, particularly by my students who are from the Boston area. At Quinnipiac University, many say they could feel the emotional impact due to the close proximity of Boston to Hamden. But in the wake of tragedy, the campus community came together in support. We, we always play up the sort of the Boston, New York rivalries that we have, uh, but it was so evident in those moments that everybody was supporting the people from Boston. Thousands of Quinnipiac University students are from Massachusetts and many from the Boston area remember this attack 10 years ago like it was yesterday. Yeah, I remember we all were just trying to figure out, me and my family were trying to figure out like, oh, is this real? We, we couldn't really believe what was going on. Third year student Alyssa Carroll grew up minutes from where the bomber was found, days after the bombing, in a boat in the town of Watertown. The bomber was found probably five-ish minutes from my house. I have friends who had bullet holes in their houses from the shootouts um, that occurred. Others from the area, even though they were children at the time, remember how the city came together. I feel like it definitely made us stronger as a whole um, and a sense of just like providing support to those who needed it um, and like supporting one, of n one another for such a tragic event. For Q30 News, I'm Katie Cohen. Thanks, Katie. Now, Ben, a lot has been going on across the United States this week, and I'm very glad to say that we have Andrew Reynolds with us in studio to give us the update on the biggest news going on right now. Andrew, I heard a major news outlet settled the defamation lawsuit. Can you tell us more? Thank you, Ben and Ethan. The week's biggest news came out yesterday as Fox News and Dominion Voting Systems settled the defamation lawsuit against the conservative giant. The settlement requires Fox News to, to pay Dominion $787 million dollars. 
Dominion sued Fox News for making claims about the 2020 election being rigged and stolen from former President Donald Trump. According to the New York Times and other media outlets covering the story, the lawsuit against the cable network appears to be one of the U.S. history's most significant settlements in a defamation case. In other news, the Kansas City community is united tonight after a teen was shot and nearly killed after he rang the wrong doorbell. The teen, Ralph Yarl, was sent to pick up his younger brothers at a friend's house but mixed up the address. When Yarl rang the doorbell, he was met by 84-year-old Andrew Lester, who shot him above his eye and the arm. Since the shooting last Thursday, the victim has been released from the hospital. The Kansas City Police Department submitted the case file to the Clay County Prosecuting Attorney, Zachary Thompson, who publicly identified Mr. Lester and announced that he had been charged with a racial offense. Lastly tonight, the United States Food and Drug Administration announced another round of COVID booster shots for anyone 65 and older and those who are immunocompromised. The newest effort by the FDA is to ensure ongoing protection against COVID, which still claims more than 1,300 lives each week. For immunocompromised patients, the injections can be administered two months after the prior one and target the Omicron forms of the coronavirus. FDA vaccine chief Peter Mark said to the New York Times that, quote, COVID-19 continues to be a genuine risk for many people. The available data continue to demonstrate that vaccines prevent the most serious outcomes of COVID-19, which are severe illness, hospitalization, and death, end quote. That is all for National News this week. For Q30 News, I'm Andrew Reynolds. Ben and Ethan, back to you. Andrew, splendid as always, but we're about to take our last break of the night. But when we come back, we have a delectable segment on New Haven Restaurant Week. And Ryan Raggio will be in the studio to fill us in on all things QU, QU Athletics. Don't touch that dial. I know what you're thinking. I need a job. I need a new career. Well, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. After high school, I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to start working. I got laid off twice. But you got to keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a two-year IT program. I found a medical course online. I'm now a consultant in the tech space. You have more options than you think. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? Why? My. Oh. <laughs> Now the commercials may be over, but the Q30 newscast isn't. Q30 Zone, Olivia Cattell witnessed the raising of the national championship flag on the quad in honor of the Quinnipiac men's ice hockey team's national championship win. Let's check it out. Earlier today, the university hosted a flag raising ceremony in celebration of the men's ice hockey team's national championship win. The team, coach, and the Ice Cats gathered on the Mount Carmel campus to raise the national champions flag for another ceremony. The university previously announced no further celebrations for the win following last week's rally at the M&T Bank Arena. Coach Pecknold addressed the crowd and thanked the Quinnipiac community for their support. Visitors at the event included Quinnipiac students and local families who were able to take a photo with the national championship trophy. Even though the win happened over a week ago, the university is still celebrating this historic win. Reporting from the Mount Carmel Campus Quad, I'm Olivia Cattell. Thanks, Olivia, and happy birthday, by the way. Now, we're of course going to be staying on the topic of sports, and I'm curious to learn who's joining us for the sports talk tonight, Ben. Well, Ethan, tonight the Q30 newscast is sporting Ryan Raggio as their latest sports reporter, and he is here to give the latest on all things lacrosse, baseball, and hockey. Ryan? Thanks, guys. Heading over to the baseball field, the team is currently 14-19, and 19, but what really stands out is their conference record of 7-5. and five. In conference play, the Bobcats took one of three against Ryder, swept Maris out of Hamden in three games, took one of three against Niagara, and took two of three over Iona. Graduate student infielder Kyle Mabes has been on fire as of late as he leads the team with a 318 batting average. 
He started off the year in a slump, batting a season low of 156, and since then is batting 402, including a 16-game hitting streak during that stretch. Now let's go up to M&T Bank Arena. Following their win in Tampa for the national championship, men, many of the men's ice hockey rosters signed with professional hockey teams. Sophomore goaltender Yanni Perret signed an entry-level contract with $775,000 for two years with the Carolina Hurricanes. Graduate student captain Zach Metza signed a two-year contract with the Rochester Americans, an AHL affiliate of the Buffalo Sabres. Other graduate students TJ Friedman, Michael Lombardi, Jake Johnson, and Skylar Brindamore signed professional contracts as well. Friedman signed with the Utica Comets, an affiliate of the New Jersey Devils. Lombardi signed with the Tucson Roadrunners, an affiliate of the Arizona Coyotes. Johnson signed a contract in the ECHL with the Fort Wayne Comets, and Brindamore Moore signed a contract with the Charlotte Checkers, an affiliate of the Florida Panthers. Now let's head down from York to hit to the turf. Men's Lacks currently sits at 6-6 six and six overall and 4-4 four and four in the conference. Besides the season opening blowout win over UMass Lowell by a score of 21-10, the rest of their wins have not been by more than two goals. As for their losses, they've been mostly blowouts. Now leading the scoring for the Bobcats is senior attacker John DeLucia. On the season, he has 27 goals and 42 points in 12 games. Graduate student goaltender Nick DiMuccio has had a tough year in between the triangular pipes as he supports a 13.2 goals against average in 12 games played. The men's team looks to finish the season above 500 with a win over Long Island University on Saturday at home. That's all for sports. Back to you guys on the desk. Thanks, Ryan. And boy, oh boy, Ben, after a long, action-packed episode of the Q30 Newscast, I sure am hungry. Do you know any cool spots I could maybe go to? Uh, Ethan, I sadly don't. But New Haven Restaurant Week is here, which means over 20 restaurants from right around the corner will be offering some special deals. Before we get any hungry, let's send it to Q30's Julia Barcello for more. April 16th through April 21st, restaurants are participating in New Haven Restaurant Week with set prices for lunch starting at $25 and dinner at $45. Bringing a taste of Peru to New Haven, Walter Vera opened Chakra Pisco Bar just under a year ago and is now participating in New Haven Restaurant Week. In, in, in general, to all the restaurants, um, New Haven Restaurant Week and it's something that you know help everybody because a lot of people come not only from New Haven, they come from different places of Connecticut and to take advantage of the deal. And so it's a good way for every restaurant to show what we have to offer. Barra further explained why he chose to open a Peruvian restaurant in New Haven. There was no Peruvian restaurants in downtown New Haven and the Peruvian food like um, is really up there, like you know, the Peruvian gastronomy is really one of the best top five in the world. Having participated in their first restaurant week right after opening, Shaka has seen an increase in customers. I would say maybe like 35-40% uh, of uh, customers, the new customers. Vera further explained that there's more to the restaurant business than just providing service. And the way I see it, you got to do three, three things the right way, you know, which is food, service, and atmosphere. And seeing people, entertaining people, you know, it's not just about like, having, you know, somebody come in and having food and a drink and leave. This week is a great time to take advantage of the deals. Make sure to go check out Shocker Pisco Bar with some friends this weekend. And for Q30 News, I'm Julia Barcello. Great stuff right there, Julia. And if you at home are looking for a good spot to stop, this is definitely the week to do it. More than 20 of New Haven's award-winning restaurants are featuring special deals and prices throughout Friday. Some restaurants participating in the special week include Olives and Oil, Harvest Wine Bar and Restaurant, Elm City Social, and much more. And Ben, I gotta tell you, a couple of those restaurants look like they could certainly satisfy my fancy. Now good for you, Ethan, but I'm more interested to hear from the viewers at home as to what their favorite grub spot well, is. You're right, that's a good point. This week on the Q30 News Twitter account, we asked you about which restaurant is your favorite. Check out the results. And as you can see, olives and oil finishing at the top spot, over 50% of the voters. I'm not really surprised by that, to be honest with you, though. Yeah, you have Geronimo, Barcelona, and Charco Pisco coming in. Right after that, but Ethan, you used to live in New Haven. What was your favorite spot to go when you were there? I mean, uh, I did vote on this poll, and I did vote for Olives and Oil, although I have been to Geronimo. I got to say, it's pretty good, I'll, although I will say Olives and Oil, step up, if I do say so myself. Well, as my final newscast, newscast excuse me, as president of this station comes to an end, I would like to thank this incredible department for helping me get to where I am today. Last year, I was given the opportunity to produce this very show and learn everything from stacking to collecting sots and even somewhat spelling. I genuinely don't think I'd be where I am today without this show and have the opportunities I've had. To that, I say thank you, Q30 Newscast. And unlike Ben, this will be my final newscast appearance ever as I am graduating for good in May. 
it is well known in the station that I am a sports person through and through. In fact, I'm the sports director here. But I want to thank the entire news department and producing staff over the years for always being so welcoming and inviting for a sports guy like myself. Go, coming into the media suite on a Wednesday was always a highlight on my week, seeing everyone working so hard while at the same time sharing a bunch of laughs and enjoying everyone's presence is something I'm very grateful for. I'm very excited to see where the show goes next. And signing off for the final time, I'm Ethan Logue. And I'm Ben Kane. Good night.